Hello guys, it's Unders. What is up? So today we are going to look at five ways you can improve your logic mixing workflow. Let's get into it. Alrighty, so here we are in Logic and we've just got a little project open here which currently sounds as such. Okay, so my first tip when you come to look at the mix down stage, even if you've been mixing as you go along, would just to be to take all of the channels that you've got. If you just highlight one right at the end and hold shift and click the furthest most, it's going to highlight all those channels and to just drop them down to zero. And you're just going to start from scratch this way. And the purpose of doing that is you need to balance your track based on what the focus of the track is going to be. So I tend to organize my track top to bottom, uh, like drums, instrumentation in the order it's going to go in and color things that I know need to be in focus. So the first thing right at the top will likely be the kick. Now that's going to be the lead rhythm in most like drum and bass, hip hop style tracks. A lot of the music I work in. So that's generally going to be where I'm going to set my first level. Now I'm going to turn my volume right down. I'm using a UAD Apollo Twin so I can just control that off to my side. Um, if you've not got a way to control your output volume like that via interface, suggest that we use a bus, turn it right down so it's just a comfortable listening level and you're just going to play it back and just bring it up so that you can hear at the lowest like listening level you'd have wherever that's going to be nice and clear. So for me that's somewhere around there for the minute and now that's going to be your guide that you're going to balance everything else from. So you know you've got your lead element, you've brought that up, you're going to keep it nice and low and you're going to bring everything else up to balance with that. And you want to bring it up so staying at that level, everything's audible, nothing sticks out too much, nothing is not audible. And because you're at such a low level, once you bring that up to a higher volume, that's going to be just right for you. It should be nicely balanced. So you just keep bringing everything in until we've got a nice balance. Okay, so my second tip is to then group some of your sounds into buses. So as you can see on the right hand side here I've got drum, bass, kick and bass, vocal, all different sounds bussed together and that's really useful because bussing the sounds together and then working on the buses first before doing individual effects can be a really helpful mix tool. So as you'll see there's quite a bit going on on the drums bus but the actual kick and bass, the samples have just been left alone in this case. That's because I've got everything working together as a single break and built it that way so I've affected it as such. Now obviously if you're building a custom effect and you want to distort a drum you need to do it on that particular one but working from the buses and getting the buses sounding great and then going backwards to fix issues is also a really good way to work. So to make a bus in Logic what we can do is take all the parts by highlighting them that are drums, which in this case is going to be right the way down to these. So as you can see, they're all labeled bus three. So if we hold shift again, we can highlight the whole lot. And just here where it says output, if we click and hold, we can then choose where they're going to go. Now, if we don't have a bus already, we can choose it and it will create that for us. But in this case, we already have drums. And in the case of my drums bus, I've just mixed that to suit. OK, 
Okay, so my next tip is once you've sort of established your balance, you've got your basic mix going, perhaps you've taken the advice of uh, going to buses and then working your way backwards, is then to look at things to EQ and whether or not they need it. Now, not every single channel needs EQ and compression on. You can see it here in this mix, which is pretty much done. There's plenty of channels that don't have EQ and compression. EQ is there for two purposes. You have creative EQ, where you're going to shape and create a new sound. You have corrective EQ, which fixes problems like inertia from microphones or removing boxy frequencies. If we have a look here at this particular sound on the drum loop, it's the rolling break. And what I've done here is work my way backwards. Instead of taking out all of those frequencies on the bus, they're just causing me problems in the break here. And the way I go about finding trouble frequencies is to create a point. Now, it doesn't matter what EQ you're using, as long as it's some form of parametric, so you can move points around. So I'll make a point. Um, I'll reduce the Q. By the way, if you use Pro-Q and you don't know how I'm doing that, it's a magic mouse feature on Mac, so you can just drag the mouse wheel. If you've got a clickable mouse wheel, it should also do it. And we're going to play it back and we're just going to sweep this spike. Now what that spike's doing is really accentuating any areas that are particularly unpleasant. Your ear tells you if they're not working and it's all about finding them and establishing where they're coming from. As you heard here, the two that I've pulled out, the blue and the green, are particularly not nice. If we sweep back over them, have a real listen. And to hear how that's really affected it, if we disable it. Yeah, just controlling it so it sits a little bit better. Do it in the whole bus. Yeah, just removing those troublesome, not too pleasant areas. And that's just some corrective EQ. And that's just a way that you can find those areas and work your way back. You will learn to hear them more and more the more you do this. Okay, my next tip is having your reverb on a bus. So right here, I've got one called Lexi, which has got the RC24 on from Native Instruments, which is a lexicon, hence I've just named this Lexi, so I know what it is. And I have quite a few things that run to this. So if we move on a bit in the mix, we've got a section here with some extra saxophone and brass going on, as well as the chords, and they're all going to Lexi here. Now, just for clarity, Lexi's got a EQ afterwards, just rolling off the top and bottom here, just to isolate that a little bit. And the reason for doing that is you can have everything feel like it's in its own singular space. You could put a reverb on each individual channel. One, it's processor heavy, and two, it, if you want to make any changes to settings, you need to check all the others. And equally, if you do make changes to settings and they're ever so slightly different, you tend to get loads of crossing frequencies and it muddies up. But everything going to a bus, it all works through that one plugin. So currently, this is what's going on. Yeah, so they're all working together in that one bus. We can take it away. And they all sound like separate sounds now. However, if we all put them in that same space,
They're all behaving and working together, and that works well for the mix. And my last tip is look at automation of your buses. So yeah, you can automate little parameters and changes and everything on each individual track. However, a bus automation holds a lot more weight in things you can do. And we'll probably see on this track, we're gonna have some bus automation. Um, in this case, K and B means keys and brass. And I've just got those working together on one bus because they work together in the track. And in this particular layout, look, we're just taking it out by sort of, what, three and a half dB in certain parts where we want to dip it. If I wanted to automate that on the lanes themselves, I'd have to do like three or four different types of automation. If I wanted to adjust the balance of them, fine. But in this case, I can just use the bus and I can just dip them out so they suit the mix a little bit better. So here's the part where that's taking effect. So you hear how it's just gradually pulled them back to let the vocals come in and they're just really casually swapping space. Um, it's really subtle, but it works perfectly for what we're after. So guys, those have been my five starting tips. If you're just getting into mixing your own music, try them out. I hope they improve your workflow. And if there's anything else you want to see, please throw it in the comments down below. Let me know. Thank you very much for watching and I will see you on the next one.